Did you know that weeds could be an amazing source of fertilizer, even though they smell terrible? Most people hate weeds in the garden, or actually having to spend their entire day picking them up from their growing space. However, as you can see from this single raised bed, I'm keeping some because they also have a function of bioaccumulator or mineral accumulator, which means plants like comfrey or dandelions, they have a long taproot that can go deep into the ground and withdraw minerals that usually are not available for your vegetable plants. There are many ways to use weeds into your garden and transform them into a source of nutrients. And the first and easiest one is chop and drop, which basically means that any time that you see weeds around your garden, you need to view them as a source of nutrients. So when you pick them, you are depriving the ground from nutrients and you need to give it back to your soil. So next time you pick them, break them with your hands or a pair of garden shears Apply them to the ground, which will act as a natural mulch, but also decompose and release those nutrients back into your ground. Another brilliant way to reuse weeds growing around your garden and transform them into something valuable that you can then reapply to your growing space is to add them to your compost. Weeds are an amazing source of nitrogen and most of all they're free. So you can let them grow and then pick them up, chop them down, add them to your compost, mix them up with a source of carbon, which could be cardboard, shredded paper or even wood chips. And then slowly they will decompose and turn into this nutrient rich compost, which is absolutely incredible for your plants. Also, you can use some weeds as a reactivator for your compost. For example, comfrey, you can make a tea by chopping it down and mixing it with water. As it's a super rich source of nitrogen, once you pour down this liquid over your compost, you are basically giving it a boost to start warming up and decompose again. If you have the opposite problem, which means your compost is too rich in nitrogen, obviously do the opposite and add a good source of carbon. If you're unsure about adding weeds to your compost, like Bermuda grass, you can simply pick them up from your garden and leave them out under the scorching sun until they are fully dry. And once they're dry, you can then add them to your compost as they are completely dead and they won't invade your compost pile. There are many methods from both Jadam natural farming and Korean natural farming that I use to nurture my plants. So rather than adding weeds to a bucket and topping it up with water and waiting for it to decompose to then use into your garden, which you can definitely do, there is nothing wrong with it, but you can also do it in the Jadam way, which means adding the plant material to a bucket, top it up with water and use leaf mold. Leaf mold is nothing else than when you walk into your nearest woodland, remove the top layer of dry leaves that you find on the ground and collect the dark, rich soil that is jam-packed with nutrients and a huge biodiversity of microorganisms that will help decompose the plant material in a shorter period of time. In fact, you can use this liquid after just seven days, but the longer you wait, the better. You can keep topping it up with more plant material and more leaf mold throughout the course of the season. Also, any plant material works to do this. There's no need to use only weeds, but you can use even the leftover plant material from your vegetables or even your flowers to then transform it into a liquid soil enhancer. The next amazing use that you could find for your weeds in the garden comes from Korean natural farming and it's called fermented plant juice. I do this process with many different weeds. In this case I'm using comfrey, the ideal time to collect your plant material. It's early in the morning just because the plant is still full of morning dew and all the nutrients and minerals are still running through the plant. And you can just collect your plant material, chop it down into bits, small pieces and then measure the weight of this plant material and measure equal amount in unrefined brown sugar or jaggery sugar. So you can add both into a bucket and start mixing it up with your hands. So wear gloves if you're using things like stinging nettles. The sugar will start to withdraw the liquids from the plant 
so the mixture will start to get mushy and moist at that point you can then add it to a jar and press it down and leave it there for seven days and you can just use a breathable top to close it and avoid insects getting through and after the seven days you can strain the whole content using gravity so without pressing it with your hands and this brown liquid will start dripping down and you can strain it out of the solids and you can use it to water your garden at a ratio of one to a hundred what i normally do without making things over complicated because we're using organic natural inputs i do one tablespoon in roughly 15 to 20 liters of water and that helps to transfer all those nutrients and minerals in a bioavailable form directly to your plants so they don't have to process it but they can just absorb them and produce food in your garden another great thing that i learned about weeds is that you can simply use weeds to understand the moisture level of your plot so rather than digging down and trying to figure out how is the moisture level in the ground you can just pull a weed from the ground and by checking the roots you can see how is the moisture level without having to dig they also act as natural mulch in an abandoned plot like where we are right now and help to increase the amount of nutrients but also sequester carbon from the atmosphere and storing it into the ground so then once this plot will be cleared from the weeds it won't be deprived of fertility but it will be just ready to go lastly if you didn't know some weeds are also edible and medicinal for example dandelions every single part of the plant is edible but also the roots have amazing medicinal properties and you can turn them into a replacement for coffee without caffeine but with a boost of energy and the same goes for stingy nettles every single part is edible you can make so many recipes with the leaves you can use the stems as a natural twine for your tomatoes or for any other plant that needs support and the roots you could potentially make a tincture which then you can take daily for a huge variety of benefits for your body For example, this is sticky willy, and you can use it for a variety of benefits by steeping it into hot water and make tea, which is great for your liver. I hope you liked today's video, and if so, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching.